This, uh, George, this is George Strait, right? Yeah, correct. All right, all right good. Yes. I hear the line there about my old beat-up leather bag. It makes me feel like he's singing about being a basketball coach, Clay. You've seen these basketball coaches. Mike Neighbors has one of the. I don't know if it's a beat-up leather bag, but how many basketball coaches have a bag with them that is made out of the same material as the basketball is? And then yeah, up taking that thing satchels. everywhere with them. I call them satchels. Yeah. I think that um, that Rawlings, you know, made those for the coaches, you know, and they they go to the clinics and I mean they hand them out. They want it. I mean they do. They look like a basketball. So the the leather case, so to speak. Yeah, that's but, right. You yeah. know what? You know what? Basketball coaches also try to do in tournaments that they're that that that, that some people talk about. Well, it's just not important. It's not important for you to do anything in this tournament because you already have your resume set. They still try to win games. Now they might. I mean, is there a reason? Do you see Eric Musselman potentially limiting minutes for any of his guys who by now are you know used to playing about thirty three, thirty four, thirty five minutes per game? Well, there's there's some of that you can rest some guys, but it also you've got your tournament seating. You can lose a game, and it's not going to really affect it much. And if you win a game. You know, you've played two, right? You get one, you know, you keep going, you play another game. So I can remember sitting and talking to both Norm DeBryan and Dave Van Horn about the uh, the conference baseball tournament. It may not be exactly the same thing, but, you know, you've got, the, you know, some, some games there that, okay, we need to keep from abusing our starting pitchers and, you know, the guys that have pitched so many innings like Cops did. Last year, and it could be other years too. There's a guy that's starting to kind of come on a young pitcher, and you can get him a couple of innings, and it might really help you in the NCAA tournament. And as you get to Omaha, you continue to develop those guys, and it gets it can get a little little hairy at Omaha. It's better now than it used to be, but they used to really pile up games in Omaha if you got in the losers bracket, and and now the you know the the first bracket's so short. That you don't pile up games, they they spread them out. But anyway, back to basketball. I think there's some times where all right, we can, you know, maybe we get Kamani Johnson a few more minutes. Maybe we, you know, maybe we get Jackson Robinson out. I don't know, but th- there's there is something to that where you all right, let's it's twofold. Let's rest some guys, not play somebody 39 minutes. Um, you know, you get to the championship game and you want to win the trophy. That might be different. I think that athletes and, and those athletes who, who are allowed to keep their social media accounts rolling throughout the season, um, if they're paying attention to some of those things, it's a foreign idea to an athlete who is conditioned to kick butt every chance they get to go into an, a game where, they, where, where somebody might say, you know, that isn't a competitor. Uh, you know, you don't really need to win this game. Once the no, game no, no, starts, no, that, 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 play that's never talk. That's yeah. never been that. That is never anybody that thinks that's an attitude that they take or talk about. Nope, they do not. It is ne- it never comes up that we're not trying to win. All right, so that's the uh, that's. I want to tell you that is, but it's not just. That's just the way those guys are in life. I mean, you they want to win. If if you're playing. If you're playing gin rummy, man, they they want to beat you, and I don't. I mean, that's and I don't really want to be around somebody that that's trying to lose. I don't. That's exactly right. All right, I want to ask about J.D. Note and Jalen Williams here for a moment. Yeah, uh, you know, guys that were not on any of the preseason lists, which I think tells you sometimes the value of those preseason lists, were just which is just for conversation. Uh, but now, when when the postseason lists come out, like it's just so obvious how good these guys are. J.D. Note, one of the best walking buckets in the history of Arkansas basketball. And, I mean, can you can you think of another forward who has been as well-rounded of a player as, as Jalen Williams is this these last two years and the time that you've covered this team? Well, there's not many. You know, I mean, you, you can, uh, you know, the, the triplets, they were all guards, so no, can't say them. Uh you know, Todd Day was a guard, but he was six seven. You know, whatever he was, you know, he played a little bit. You know, guard forward ish. Uh, but man, he didn't take charges. 
I mean, it, you know, he was just about scoring. He got a lot of steals. You go back and see what he did defensively, and he took risk, and he'd come from off the ball, and, and you know, he scored that way, you know, with breakaways. Um, you know, Lindsey Howell was a guy that, you know, you say, okay, glue guy, and that's what Jalen is, right? He's on the all-glue team. He's a super glue guy. Um Lindsey Howell, you know, there's through the years you can pick out certain guys that I think Nikki Davis was probably in that category. Derek Hood maybe in that category. Rebound, score, score, rebound. Um, Derek Hood was just, a, I mean, you, there's a guy that you would never say, hey, we're going to lose this game. He might choke you. Um, but yeah, I mean, that those are forwards that I would say great players in. Jalen Williams is a great player. Oh, he definitely is there, Clay. And one really good play. I don't know if I'd put him on the same level as J- uh, Jalen Williams this year, but Adi Sony has given you a lot of productive minutes. He's been a, a great starter for you for 90% of the season uh, this year. And we, we had a caller last hour, to our last segment, talk about how he thinks that, you know, what if Jackson Robinson can get hot? What if K.K. Robinson can you know, fill those roles. Do you have any faith in those guys who really have only played 10 minutes in the last well, month I, to, I don't to see, be able to yeah, I don't, get hot? I don't see, I mean, they need Tony back. And when they, and until they do, they're a different team. And he could cover point guards. He can cover a forward. Probably can't, you know, he's probably not going to be assigned to, uh, you know the Auburn center. That, that's that's mm. that's a that's a reach. But as far as slowing down a point guard, I mean, he reminds me of Daryl Walker in that way. That you put him on anybody, then he's he can he can shut him down, and or a Moncrief, you know, the same thing. Um, but he's 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 got length. He's got the ability to stay in front of somebody, and then on offense. Yeah, he he doesn't have what I say a pure shot, but he is a great cutter. I mean, he he had that's an art now. I'm telling you to realize when your man turns away and you make eye contact with the passer and you make that cut because all that has to happen in a blink. Mm-hmm. And there's not very many that understand exactly how to do that. And uh, I know coaches that have run like the Princeton back cut offense, they get frustrated because it's like, this guy doesn't know how to do that. And we can't teach him. And, I mean, Tony just, he has that. And there have been a lot of buckets, a lot of critical buckets when you think, we're not really getting any action going all at once he makes a back cut and it's a layup. All right, Clay, we'll uh, keep you on here for this uh, upcoming segment. And certainly need to get into pro day for a uh, number of the Arkansas, former Arkansas football players that are hoping to get uh, looks at from the scouts. Also want to remind our listeners about the easiest place to bet online, BetUS Racing, BUSR.com, the website. They've got all the odds on March Madness, a bracket contest coming up. Hey, we're going to have a bracket contest too. Thousands of dollars at BUSR.com in prizes, and you can get an exclusive 100% deposit bonus if you're an ESPN Arkansas listener. Put in 100 bucks to your account, they'll give you $100. Put in $500, they will give you $500. Just go to BUSR.com slash Morning Rush. You can bet with confidence, bet with BUSR. And if you got any questions for Clay Henry, we'll take calls and texts at 877-377-6963. Halftime coming right back. Clay, you saw Arkansas gets a grad transfer defensive end committed Tuesday from Georgia Tech. Jordan Dominic will have one year of eligibility. Had some production uh, with Georgia Tech the last couple of years. Seems like a guy that's not coming here to uh, to sit very much. You got to transfer potentially. I know he's visiting. The kid from Tulane is visiting sometime this week too, and that's a defensive tackle. So the rebuilding of the defensive line continues. I'm not sure what you might know about Dominic, but when I look at, at the production he had and the pressure rate that he's able to generate for a defense that wasn't very good, uh, you think he could make a? I think he can make an impact here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's Trey Williams, but he's he's at least in the same conversation with a Trey Williams type player. Um, you know, I I don't sneeze at the ACC. I don't. It's not the SEC, but there really is some talent 
talented teams in there and really some good offenses. So I think that's uh, that's a notable pickup, and I, I think that they – you know they they like what they've found so far with their other uh, transfer portal guys. You know I think you'll see that Arkansas is still really talented next year. Those those uh, those guys. So that's part of recruiting, and they seem to be able to close. And you look at the the class that they're they're own to. You know they're they've got commitments ten now. I think. And the portal guys they picked up, I think they can close, and I think you're going to continue to see a surge in recruiting and see a more talented team each year. And the development, I think, will be solid. I think that they've got a good strength program uh, there. And, uh, you know, here's what I think we will continue to see uh, Arkansas recruit well and evaluate well once they're on campus. And those guys that, you know, there'll be some misses from time to time. And they'll backfill with with portal guys where where, where they miss. Um, and I also believe, from what I'm seeing and hearing about the future over the next six seven weeks of defensive line juniors that are going to visit, uh, that they're going to be able to recruit defensive linemen with with uh, Deke Adams, the new defensive line coach. I th- looks like he he will bring in some talent. Interesting. You know, I heard Sam Pittman talking on the, uh, I think it was the Saturday Down South podcast with Connor O'Gara a couple of days ago about the idea that there needs to be a dead period for transfer portal, uh, for the transfer portal specifically. I mean, we've had dead periods for high school mm-hmm. recruits. It would make perfect sense if you do that for the portal too, right? Yeah, I think that the coaches want to have some uniformity in uh, the all this stuff, it seems like we're just kind of going on the fly. Things are going to change, and we'll make adjustments as we go. And then there'll be adjustments to adjustments, right? So right. yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. I I don't I don't know that I can tell you anymore. I used to know all that stuff when the dead periods here, or there. What you know, I asked to have to ask Dudley, what what's going on? When what when is when are the when's the next real recruiting? Hot spot. And he goes. Uh, it's been going on. It's twelve months. <laughs> <laughs> I think the word you use, uniformity, is exactly what you're looking for. Is just at least a knowledge of when you can add to your team and when you may lose sure. guys from your team. It's pretty simple. Yep. Yep. And, and you know the coaches is like, hey, I, there needs to be some time where they coach their players, right? <laughs> yeah, then there's that too. Yeah, got to be some point of uh, actual development in there. You can't just be spending all your time on the next guy. You got to concentrate on the guy right now. And, you know, some of the guys of yesterday, you know, pro day uh, being today on, on the Hill. Have you heard any early reports out of, uh, no, out of pro I day? Anything yet? A, no, I'm, I'm in Norfolk. And so I don't know. I, that's kind of not on my radar today. Sorry about that. No. I'm working on a, on a column and trying to, I was in, I was hot and heavy a while ago, the last two hours writing and, and unfortunately, I'm about 2,500 words in, and it's getting longer. So <laughs> um, I tend to do that. I don't think anybody else writes the length of stuff that I write, and it's, it's probably – I'm probably a dinosaur. I mean, no, I don't, no, there's nobody else that writes it, mm-hmm. and there's nobody else that probably can get it in print. I can just say, well, we'll put it on the Internet, and we'll run the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and, I, and I feel sorry for y'all when y'all open up one of my stories and you realize that it's it's 40 pages long. <laughs> well, I mean, the w- stuff of yours that I have read, Clay, it's been well worth the uh, 40 pages to 40 read. 40 pages, yeah. yeah. But with uh, one thing that is still, I guess, and maybe it's because I haven't been around the programs very long, but just from watching baseball from the outside, the worry about the bats going. I mean, what is the... Is there really actual concern there with the team that's gone two and three of the first three weekends and more than likely will probably get a four game sweep this weekend? They went seven and three. Or seven right? and three, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they won seven Sorry. games. Um the the you have to so when you look at the scores of a golf tournament and for instance, you know, Pebble Beach 
there'll be times when even par is really good score mm-hmm. out there. It's because the wind blew. And then there's times since the last couple of years when the wind didn't blow and they shot 20 under. And it just, the wind and conditions in sports are part of the story. And if you look at scoring through the years in football, every once in a while you'll see a three to nothing game. Well, if you dig back into it, it was probably played in the rain, like a storm, Mm -hmm. you know, and they were in the mud. Well, then there's not going to be any points. And there's, you know, they're just, they're going to putt on third down. They're going to do weird stuff. And I think what, you know, it's, it's, What's happened, it's really helped Arkansas pitching as well as hurt the Arkansas hitting. When the wind blows in at 15 to 25, it just, it's just not, you don't, the, the outfitters shallow up, singles have a hard time falling in, and you're not going to hit it over anybody's head, right, Phil? I mean, it's so the ERAs get really low. Your pitching is going to look really good, and so we, we may not really know about Jackson Wiggins and Hagen Smith and Connor Nolan quite yet because they pitched in, in really, other than maybe not being able to grip their, the curveball and spin it, you know, in a cold day, they have gotten the benefit of some, some great days. But I, I think what you've seen is a guy with a really flat stroke that was really excited to hit and has gone out of the zone, and that's Peyton Stovall. He will get that fixed. Um, you know, Len Zilly and Brofren, both those guys have hit against good pitching at other stops. Michael Turner's figured it out. He's yeah. just come in running. But I think they'll be all right, and I haven't really seen um, the kind of power that you expect from – Battles more and Slavens and Wallace and we know those guys can hit. So I think it's just you know it's just it'll come and that doesn't keep you from saying well they're not hitting right now. When are they going to hit? Good question. I can't I can't tell you that, but I bet you they hit this weekend against these guys. I would think so. You know, and I know well the music's playing here, so we'll, we'll end it in a moment. But you know, Dave's even said. And when the wind's blowing in, you got to find other ways to hit the ball. Mm. High and hard, with the wind blowing in as, as hard as it has from right field, is not going to work. Or you may need to be some butt and run and hit and run and do some other things. Yeah. How about low and hard, like ground balls yeah. up the middle? I love them. I love Don't them, swing it to high hard. idea. So. Let's get back into the mid-90s, right? <laughs> or maybe even the 70s. Well, it might be over this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pros and college hoops. For all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's promo code B L E A V. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts.